Hello there, welcome to part 6 of the Challenger tank build from Tamiya. Uh, Ted here from uh, emodels.co.uk um, We're on the final stages now, we're on the run home and we're going to get some paint on this bad boy. Um, what I've done since the last time we, uh, on the last video, I left you there and I suggested that uh, you might want to try and put some uh, texture onto the tank to indicate a non-slip surface which I've done all over this one now. Uh, I've then gone on and give the whole thing a wash. If you remember right back in the uh, first video I suggested that you take the sprues, give them a wash in hot soapy water. Uh, but since then we've been handling it, got f grease from our hands and fingers onto the tank and the build itself. So it's always a good idea to go and give it another wash. Uh, and leave it to dry naturally. Don't try rubbing it dry, just leave it to dry. Um, just leave it one side. It's been a beautiful day here in uh, the UK this time of year in the summer. Um, so I've left it to bask in the sun while I sat in the deck chair and watched it dry. Uh, anyway, um, we're ready to paint now. What we're going to do first is we're going to apply a coat of primer. Two reasons for that. One, it gives a great base for the paint itself. And secondly, if there's any um, problems, any faults, any uh, problems within the build itself on the plastic, uh, a coat of primer usually highlights that so you can fix them before the final coat of paint. Right the way through this build, I did suggest that one or two parts we weren't going to glue um, together so we could get it all sprayed up or painted up. Um, and we're now in the stage where we could take it apart and get it ready for painting. So we can take the barrel off, that wasn't uh, glued on. The turret itself will come off. You may remember in the last video I said that I wasn't going to glue the commander's coupler on uh, permanently. Uh, I've built it and just glued it on with some white PVA glue. That way after we've painted it we can uh, take, take it off and do some work on the commander's vision sights around there we can pick those out a lot easier than trying to pick them out on the tank. Uh, so that comes off there. You remember the um, upper hull itself just rested on some poly caps on the front and it clipped in at the back. Uh, that's them there so that's ready on one side. I did find as I left you last time I did find that the bazooka plates can actually be glued to the side of the upper hull without gluing them to the uh, plate supports here we can leave them till the end and final, final fix them once it's all been painted. Next things to come off we're going to take all the road wheels off and we can do them again uh, separately. You remember as well they were all put on with poly caps so they just push on. Um, what we can do with these, uh, what I've already done, I've done one of them, I've taken it off got myself a box of toothpicks, a small bit of tissue paper, just roll it around because the, because the toothpick will just it'll just rattle around on there and fall off. Just a small bit of tissue paper and that will just take up the distance in the hole. That's ready to paint now. One way to do that, piece of packing polystyrene foam, whack it in there, do the same with the rest of them, they'll all come off, do the same with the rest of them till you've got all the road wheels there ready to paint and we're ready to go. Uh, what we're going to spray this with, um, the primer that we're going to use, I'm actually going to use the Pumbrel acrylic spray. The guys at uh, eModels will certainly uh, fix you up with something if you don't want uh, to use the Humbrol. There's lots of different types of sprays available. Uh, even some from a car uh, parts store, you may find some of those. Uh, they're ideal, I've used them before. Uh, it's just that I've got this one in stock, so we'll be using this. Uh, and then once the uh, primer's on, we'll get ourselves away and do some base coating. Right, what I'll do now, um, looks like it's going to be a nice day outside, so we'll get everything set up and I'll see you all outside. Okay, shortly. we are, we're outside. Um, you'll have to bear with us, we are outside. It's not uh, the same control conditions as in my uh, model room. 
um, you'll have to put up with the birds singing and kids playing in the background and such like that. Anyway, here we are. We're ready to put some paint on. Uh, you'll find uh, that I've got my um, the base of this tank in the in a homemade sort of spray booth, just a, a cardboard box from the supermarket, just cut down. Um, makes an ideal sort of um, area to, to spray in. Uh, I've got the spray can ready. Uh, what I've done with the spray can is just prior to setting everything up is soaked it in, just uh, let it uh, sit in some warm water. Put it in the warm water, um, heats the can up, the contents inside it. Actually I find it flows a little bit better from the spray can. Um, give it a good shake. Make sure the, the rattle in the can, as in the rattle can, uh, give it a good shake and let that rattle go, shake it for a good minute or so. Anyway, here we go, let's uh, try and put some paint on this. Okay. Keep shaking it. And before you put your first spray of paint on, just give it a spray away from the model. Make sure that something's coming out. And just the first coat is just a light dust, probably not covering anything at all. And just turn it round. Always handy to have some um, rubber gloves. Try and get in all the nooks and crannies, just a quick spray, not too close, just about four to six inches, well about six inches away, then you'll see where the paint's hitting, and then just we'll leave that, leave that for now, and we'll go on and do the next part, which is the upper hull. Once again, try, start the spray. Just prior to it going on the model and keep it going until you reach the other end. It really does cover well. Just get a light dusting on first. Because we're painting it grey, we can see where it's hitting. And leave that one. This acrylic spray doesn't take long to go off at all. Keep giving it a shake every now and again. Give the can a shake. Again, there's some parts underneath that we'll do next. We'll leave that for now, move it to one side. And then we'll get on with the road wheels. Remember how we put the road wheels on the cocktail sticks? And once again, just a quick... Don't put too much on the time. Just a touch, then let it uh, one side to 
skewer. Now we can come back to the uh, lower part again. The first spray, the dust, first spray dusting, has gone off enough for us now. So you can just pick out the parts. Just pick out the parts where it's missed. Just notice how we're giving it just light touches. We don't want to swamp it with paint. We're just giving it a. Okay, we'll carry on with that. I'll carry on with that now and uh, we'll get uh, everything um, primed and we'll then get back to the model room when this has all gone off and look at putting some uh, base coat on. Okay, that's us back at the model bench after being outside and doing the priming. Um, I'd certainly recommend that you'd leave the primer coat to go off overnight. I've uh, left this one for a good day or so now uh, to really let the paint cure. Uh, it will dry fairly quickly, it will feel dry to the touch, but I'd recommend that you uh, leave the the next stage until certainly overnight at least, um, just to let the paint cure. Uh, we're going to be covering this in an acrylic paint and we're going to use a uh, Tamiya uh, NATO Green XF67. There's lots of other version uh, variants available from different manufacturers. I think an equivalent colour would be Humbrol matte 117 and the Vallero um, 70894 Russian Green which are all uh, good matches for the NATO colours. Um, the acrylic coats are ideal, they uh, go on nice and smooth, really need uh, no messing with at all but I would recommend that we uh, that you were uh, thin the, the paint before applying it, particularly by brush. As for the brushes, uh, I would um, I've, I've uh, obtained these from the guys at eModels, which are the Humbrol flat brushes. Uh, a really good uh, value for money um, set of brushes, four in the pack, uh, covering more sizes. Uh, what we're going to use for this one is a size 2, which is the 10mm flat brush. Uh, give a good coverage get the paint on nice and smoothly um, and uh, really do a good job. There are better brushes and I'm sure as you progress through your career uh, of modelling, as you improve and want to take things further, you can buy brushes as and when you need them. Okay, we've given the, the paint a good shake and I'd also recommend that as well as a shake, give it a stir as well. Uh, the lolly sticks ideal give it a good stir and then we need something to put the paint onto I wouldn't recommend I used to do it myself but I wouldn't recommend that you actually dip the paintbrush into the paint pot itself uh, there's a chance that you can cross contaminate your paint if you have other paints around there's a fair chance that you put um, a different colour brush into that pot and then that's that pot of paint ruined um, what I would to recommend is that back to the old takeaway lid, uh, takeaway cartons um, from the local restaurant is that we use the lids, these are ideal. Uh, put a few drops of paint just on, on there using the, uh, the lid as a palette. You can buy purpose made palettes but uh, save a penny and it goes towards your next model. Okay, put the lid back on. I want to give you a sh short demonstration on this. Uh, I wouldn't expect you to want to watch and me paint the whole model. Drop of thinners. I recommend for this, for Tamiya, about 50-50. That's it. Some thinners. 
Tamiya paints can be thinned with their own thinners. Um, I wouldn't actually recommend water for thinning Tamiya, Tamiya paints. Uh, it seems, in my opinion, it goes a little bit gloopy. Other acrylic paints are quite suitable to be thinned with uh, water, but it doesn't seem to work just that brilliantly with Tamiya for some reason. Um, so we'll try this. What we need to do, load your brush and we're only going to put a thin coat on. Uh, we don't want to cover the whole tank or the whole model in just one coat. We need some thin coats. Load your brush. I have previously, prior to coming back to you, I have done some test painting on some bits that can't be seen just to uh, get the right mixture uh, of thinners to paint ratio. Uh, do the practice and we're ready to go. So let's put some paint on. Just give it some nice long strokes. Do it fairly quickly. Get the paint in all the crevices. These brushes do cover well. Really get the paint to lie down and the thinned paint helps the paint, it's the thinners help the paint flow better and lie down. As you can see, a nice wide brush really gives us lots of paint to lay it on and spread it down. Everything, paint everything green. We can pick out the details later on. Try not to drag the paint around too much. Get it on. Remember this is just the first covering coat, the base coat. And get as much as we can. Any little gaps in that letter, we'll use some of the smaller brushes. Just having a check that you can see what I'm doing. You might think that looking at this, maybe you can't see it on the video itself, but you think well, if you're using this Vallejo, uh, sorry, the Tamiya NATO Green, you'll look at it and think it's a little bit light. Uh, it will darken down a little, especially as we get some more coats on. We'll probably look about maybe two or three very light coats on this. As you can see, because it's thinned, the brush gives us some good coverage and still retains the detail within the tank. See the paint's only well on the palette. Try not to overload it, just use the paint that you've got. Applying too much paint and it'll start to run and drip. So nice, don't be afraid of getting the paint on. Get it there. Look to see if there's any build-ups. Took it into the corners. One thing about um, painting with acrylic paints, if you put acrylic down first, if you paint with acrylic first, you can then go over and use enamels on top of the acrylic. However, you can't do it the other way around. If I was to paint this in humbrol enamel and then try to go over it with an acrylic based paint, it will react and blister and won't look very good at all. So remember, you because we've 
spray painted it using acrylic. We can use both acrylics and enamel. The enamels on top of the acrylics but the acrylics don't go on top of enamels. And getting it off, you made a mistake, you don't like it, something's gone wrong with it. Uh, it's dried on your tank, you don't like the colour, you want to get it off. One of the best solutions to get dried paint off a model, either enamel or acrylic, is to use an oven cleaner. Uh, Mr. Muscle uh, Fairy Oven Cleaner. Give it a soak in a bag for a few hours and your paint will come off. So don't be afraid of making mistakes. We've all made them. Uh, your oven cleaner will get it off. Okay, this is going on well, so I'll continue with this and once I've got a coat of paint on everything, we'll come back and we'll look at getting the, the next paint colour on, which will be the black uh, camouflage stripe. Um, so I'll continue with this, see how, far, see how far that drop of paint's gone, just with some thinners. We've nearly painted the whole of this turret. So I'll go and get on with this, let the paint go off and come back to you for the next stage. See you in a moment. Just while the uh, base coat <coughs> is drying on the main body of the tank I thought we'd have a look at uh, painting the, the road wheels. Uh, on these road wheels, on the outside of them is a, uh, is a rubber tyre. Um, now the Instructions do say I think it's XF1 for the Tamiya uh, black, which actually, which is actually a dark a dark black if um, if, if that's correct. <clears throat> However, if you look at um, any rubber in the in the real world, um, if you go and have a look at your car tyres, they're not particularly black. They're more of a grey black, and an ideal colour to represent that would be um, in this case I'm going to use the Vallero um, black grey. Uh, Ravel do uh, an, an enamel colour, uh, number 9, matte 9, which I think they call anthracite black. And uh, Humbrel also do it as uh, number 32, uh, dark grey. However, I've got the Viero uh, acrylic uh, paint available, so we'll use that. What you need to do the tyres is a nice thick brush, load it with the paint, and holding it, your wheel on a co on a cocktail stick don't move the brush but move the wheel spin the wheel just touching your brush on the edge hopefully we can do this right now and just touch it on and spin the wheel round that way you should be able to paint the tyre on the road wheel, then just fill in with the rest of it. So apply your, your base coat onto the centre of the wheel, then using that technique, takes a little bit of a practice, just practice, just take your time, do it slowly, don't overload your brush, let the brush do the work with the paint. If you want to do it that way around, or if you want to paint the tyre first and then paint the inside, if you're, painting the, if you're painting it the other way around, don't worry too much about getting little bits of green paint onto the uh, tyre itself. Uh, sometimes if you look at tanks, that's how they are in the real world, um, the whole thing is just giving a blast with a spray gun and they're not too fussy where it goes. And sometimes you'll actually see the tyres will be painted black. But that's how to do the tyres anyway. Uh, we're still waiting for the uh, the base coat to dry, so we'll get back in a moment and have a look at the next stage. 
Okay, as you join me back at the workbench, you're probably uh, looking at the video now thinking, crikey, what's that? That's actually our tank under there. Uh, we're masking off for the black camouflage stripes. Uh, I say masking off because I intend to spray this. Um, I know that some of you that are probably beginning may or may not have an airbrush. Um, however, matte black paint, uh, which we're going to use for the stripes on this NATO uh, tanks paint scheme, is ready available in the hobby range uh, from Humbrol, Ravel, Tamiya. Um, they're all available. Even the car accessory shops will uh, you'll be able to get a, a rattle can of matte black paint. I find it gives a much better finish. Um, however, it can be done by hand using the same technique that we used to paint the tank. Uh, just uh, some watered down, um, some thinned black paint and just apply with a brush. Draw your, your general shape on freehand, draw it on with a pencil. Um, the instructions in the kit give uh, an ideal um, paint scheme and a, a pattern to follow if you wanted to follow that one. Have a look on the internet, uh, pick a tank. They're all fairly freehand. Um, the tanks themselves came from the factory just in a standard overall green and you can if you wish just leave it at that standard green. There are a lot of tanks in service just painted green without the black stripes. I think the stripes had a little bit more detail, uh, extra sort of impact to it. Um, so what we've done, we've masked off using my favourite product, which is the blue tack. Simple, easy stuff to do. Uh, use the blue tack to you follow the outline of the um, stripe that you want. Just press it on. And then using a, a lolly stick or something, uh, a scribing tool, just press it down onto the hull, into the shape, the desired shape you want, over everything. As I say, these were just uh, painted freehand um, when the tanks got to the unit. Um, just as the guy with the spray can decided he wanted to spray it uh, so there's no right or wrong so that's it just take your time um, secrets of spray painting is 95% of your time will be spent masking off and the 5% just a few seconds a few minutes will be taken up with painting so um, the more time you spend on this the better so that's that bit done, that's the back end done. We're just going to apply our tissue paper just to shield off the bits that we don't want painted and we'll be ready to go. Um, then the, the reveal, that's the best bit about spray painting is when uh, it's all done, it's all dried and you start taking the masking off and it magically appears in front of your eyes. Okay, let's go and get this done and then we'll come back and see the finished product. Okay, back from spraying. Um, this is the fun bit and I thought I'd share it with you. Um, I always like this bit is uh, taking off the masking and seeing what's underneath. So uh, let's have a look. Once again, as you put it on, just take it off nice and slow. And we'll see what the results are. So it um, takes an age to mask something off and then just minutes to paint it and then it all comes off again. Pretty good so far, just a bit of blue tack stuck around but that will all clean off.
as I said, the, uh, the design of the stripe is entirely up to you. Do it freehand. Um, if there's any overspray, if you've uh, missed a little bit on your masking, or it's sneaked underneath, uh, just out with the paintbrush. Nearly done. You'll see that um, when we've masked it off and sprayed it, we've gone over everything, the tools, uh, the boxes, and everything. That's how it would have been done in the unit. Uh, just drive it in the garage, spray it gun out, and everything gets done. There we are. One or two bits just to clean off. Where the... Uh, blue tacks just stuck to it but I think you can get the idea now but uh, we're looking good that seems to have done the trick as I say any bits of pieces that overspray just touch it up There we are, have a look right round. Oh, there's a bit a bit more there. There we go, looking something like now. Okay, I'll carry on and clean this up and then we'll move on. Okay, while the uh, tank is uh, being allowed to dry, I've been getting on with uh, preparing the tracks. Um, tracks on tanks are quite often displayed uh, rusty. Uh, but on a, a modern tank, um, particularly one that's in use all the time, the tank tracks don't particularly get to be very rusty. They do show a bit of uh, wear and tear or a bit of neglect, particularly if they've been used for a while. Um, the tanks on the Challenger are actually rubber padded. Um, so while you've had your uh, spray out with the black spray paint for the black stripes, if you're using that, type uh, give the tracks uh, a coat of spray paint as well uh, what we're going to do now uh, what we've got in front of me I've got a, I've got a wash of brown enamel well it's a uh, rust uh, this is the humbrol I'm just looking for the number um, humbrol 113 it's uh, a rust enamel that's been thinned down quite uh, quite a lot with some white spirit uh, don't use your best brushes for this because it won't do them any good at all. Just get an old brush and what we're going to do is apply a wash. I don't know if you can see this happening. Uh, we'll just apply a wash just by touching it and allowing the paint to run down between the track pads. Go along, all of them, allowing the paint to run in and out the other side 
then put it on quite thickly because we're going to take it off again in a minute if you hold the track up it'll actually give the chance of the paint to run down what we're going to do with this technique this is what they call a wash uh, you're probably if you're new to modeling you're probably wondering what all this talk about washes are uh, this is a simple wash and this is a simple way of doing tank tracks if you look around the internet there's lots of ways and various techniques for doing tank tracks uh, this is a way I found simple enough to do go along all the tank all the size of the tank all along along the size of the tank track and giving it all a wash don't worry if you miss bits it will run down see how it's very difficult if we can just catch that in the light there the paint's running down between the track pads and as the white spirit um, evaporates it'll leave a thin film of brown paint now when we've done that just have a look it doesn't matter if you could even if you could even just try and push it in if you wanted to because what we're going to do now we're going to take some tissue and just run along the tops of the track, track pads and take that wash off and it'll leave it it'll leave it within the recesses and do that on both sides on the other side they actually actually the inside of this track the colors are actually very good and won't need much at all plus when it's on the tank you're not going to see the inside of the track too much what we're really looking to do is give some detail on the front edge and on the sides of the track so run that all along that will then give an effect of some rust some general oxidization uh, remember as I said these things are in use all the time so they tend not to go rusted they're right being used it's purely a matter of personal taste how much you want to do some people depict them as very rusty and uh, if you want to go on to the next stage and weather the tank with mud and dirt some of this work is going to be hidden anyway but uh, adding muck and dirt is not an excuse for poor preparation prepare it first ah, there we go it's looking good wipe, wipe that off And if we can see again, you can see now that that's giving the tank an overall effect between the track pads, the bits that won't actually be touching the ground, um, just a just bit of general wear. So we'll leave that, as I said, do both sides, and then put it to one side. Uh, there we go, just doing the other side. Put it to one side, and you'll end up with a track pad like this one I did earlier in a good old blue Peter fashion here's one I did earlier now then what we're going to do now we'll just put that over there to one side and we'll do that carry on with that shortly is find our palette again and this time I've got some silver just basic uh, this is Revell uh, 91 I think it's just classed as silver doesn't need to be steel or anything like that because we're only going to use a little bit so we've got the lid off a 
find this and stir it up. It has been stirred just prior to recalling. This time we're going to need some of this on our palette. Remember we're using these um, takeaway lids. Let's put that on one side because it will get knocked over. And this time we're going to do what they call a dry brush technique or a similar to a dry brush technique. Anyway, we don't really want to take as much paint off as what we do. Apply your paint to the brush and then brushing it on a towel take all that paint off again. Then go to your track and this time we're going to highlight the edges here. See how this side's already been done? And to do that just take your brush with hardly any paint on and just dry brush over the tops and the paint will pick up on all the raised detail. A bit too much there so just give it a rub off. Once again just keep it going. It really happens quite quickly. Pick it up on the edge. Probably get all this one done. Just touch more paint. Once again, brush, take all that paint off and continue. Because what we, as I say, what we're trying to do is give the impression that these uh, steel tracks and the rust has been worn off them by the tank rolling across the ground. And the parts that are in contact with the ground will be nice and clean. So there we go. There we are. Now then, if you could, if this picks it up, you can see how it just shines and contrasts with the brown rust in the middle. And that's really all I ever do with my tracks. Um, I'm sure if you. If you wanted to take it further, I'm sure if you looked around on uh, Google, on YouTube and things like that, there are lots of guys who will tell you how to take this whole method lots further. But I find that this is really as good for a beginner. And if you're not a beginner, it's as good as what you need. It just picks it up, it just reflects in the light a little bit. Remember we won't be seeing all the track, that's about as much as we'll see. There we go. Okay, so we're going to put them to one side. Uh, we've got our tank, it's all drying off. I'm trying not to get silver paint on it. There she is. Paint's all drying off. Uh, I've also had a gun I had a go on the gun barrel. Uh, this is painted, once again, brush painted with, um, I think it was, trying to find it, that was painted with Tamiya XF49 khaki with the um, securing rings for the thermal sleeve just picked out in standard black. Uh, adds a little bit of contrast to the tank. She will slide on that like that. And then uh, that's about it for today uh, for this video. Next time we'll come back will be the final video as we put the finishing touches to it. A uh, little bit of uh, light weathering perhaps uh, touching up just some highlights on the tank really, uh, finishing it off with a detail and a roundup. But uh, thanks for watching this video, have a look out for the next one and we'll see you all again. Thank you.